<laughs> Lions at Texans. Texans Oof. coming off a tough loss on Thursday Night Football where things just did not look good for them. But they're dealing with some injury. They're still going to be dealing with injuries going into this one. But um, we get Nico Collins back in this game. We get Nico back. Maybe. I feel like maybe, you know, feels like yeah. it's, it's trending in that direction. Right, uh, right. We'll so for sure. what, what's your matchup that matters here for Sunday Night Football? Um, it's I'm going back to the trenches. Because that's what I well, hey, that's, that's, that. I am. I am. I know. That's what that's what the Lions do so damn well on both sides of it. Uh obviously one of the best offensive lines, but their defensive line is specifically against this Houston O line because this Detroit D line, despite suffering the loss of Aiden Hutchinson, has been able to regroup based almost solely because of Ali McNeil and DJ Reader, who aren't getting enough praise, play. We're not talking about them enough and what they've been able to do on that defensive interior, which has made things easier for this Detroit defense to absorb the hit of losing Aiden Hutchinson. And now you go out and you get Zadarius Smith. What's really interesting about the way that Detroit has approached the pass rush in particular since losing Aiden Hutchinson, they actually have a 5.1% higher pressure rate than they did with Aiden Hutchinson but it's because they've increased their blitz rate from 31.6% to 38.9% in his absence. So that is the biggest thing that Aaron Glenn did to kind of make up for losing Aiden Hutchinson, where he trusted his line to get pressure with four before. Now he's blitzing more guys. That's also involving different guys like Brian Branch, um, even Kirby Joseph, who's their free safety kind of gets in on it. They have so many different chess pieces in that defensive secondary the two highest, or two of the three highest graded safeties in the league, uh, right there, and the, he's involving them in the pass rush too because they both like to hit people. So now with Zadarius Smith, do you continue that trend of still blitzing more, or do you trust him to kind of pick up some of that slack that Aiden Hutchinson left? I don't know the answer to that, but I know that I'm going to really enjoy watching against this Houston offensive line, which has been kind of struggling this season. 65.3 PFF grade, it ranks 25th. 69.8 pass blocking grade, that ranks 16th. 18 sacks allowed in pass protection, that's tied for the fourth most. So this is what I'm going to be watching, how Zadarius Smith kind of changes how the, the Detroit Lions do things. I don't know, it's going to be really fun. Obviously, it's, I think it's a good call out with this being the first preview show after the final trade deadline, and we had a pretty decently active one. So uh, we've talked about some guys uh, who have been traded and in new spots here throughout the show. And I think obviously Darius Smith is a big one because we've talked about edge rusher um, really ever since Aiden Hutchinson went down as a potential ad for the Detroit Lions. And I think that's specifically a really good way that we could see what the changes might be there. I, I sort of have an interesting one here because I think the, the Lions offensive line is really good. I think it's it, it's one of the better units uh, in the NFL. And I was thinking about them versus the Texans. And we sit here and we go like, okay, well, you know, if the Texans get pressure and, you know, let's talk about like Panay Sewell versus Daniel Hunter and Will Anderson. And like, you know, we, we can talk about the offensive linemen going up against each other. But I actually wanted to look at it a different way. My matchup that matters is actually if the Lions do their job very well up front and they get and, – and the Texans don't get pressure, mm -hmm. what's the coverage like when they don't get pressure? And mm – -hmm. The Texans are actually still a top 15 team in the NFL. They're their top half of the NFL in total coverage grade when they don't get any pressure, when there's zero pressure recorded. So we always love to say like, oh, you know, like th this matchup of them getting pressure. And I, I think Penny Sewell is one of the best offensive tackles in the NFL. I just think the Lions offensive line in general is really, really good. So yeah. what if they do their job really well? Yeah. Is this actually that big of a deal breaker if – Will Anderson and Daniel Hunter don't get pressure on the lines. And I don't know that it necessarily is. I'm not saying it's going to be like, a, a, you know, that if they can't get pressure, all oh, the Texans are going to win this football game. That's not necessarily what I'm saying. But when I started to research this and I've sort of found these numbers, it might not be as big of an issue as, as we normally would think that it would be if the Lions offensive line actually wins this matchup because of how good it feels like the Texans have been in coverage so far this season, which kind of brings me into my plus factor here. I think Jalen Petrie could be a big time plus factor in this game. Mm. Petrie has the highest grade of the full-time players on the coverage side of things for the, um, for the Houston Texans. He's got six forced incompletions. He's got one interception. He's got a 69.5 coverage grade. And if, if you remember specifically the one interception that he had against Anthony Richardson, 
he is ball hawk in that throw. I mean, he, this is an aggressive player. I remember watching him on the sidelines at the senior bowl and he was doing the same thing. He did the same thing yeah. at Baylor. The The defense that he was in at Baylor at the senior bowl. Now with the Texans is they want to let him have the freedom to have his eyes on the quarterback because he reads things really well and he's really aggressive. And this is a player who, again, if you're not getting pressure, maybe you might have an opportunity. Goff doesn't do this very often. I'm not. I'm not trying to say this is any sort of Goff slander because he's playing very efficient. He's playing great. But maybe you get a play in there where Petrie reads it right. Lions like to do a lot of stuff over the middle. Maybe you can cut over the middle, get yourself an interception, get what you need to get to have a a, a upper hand on the turnover battle to win this football game against a really, really good football team. Lions are one of the only teams in the NFL. They're actually one of two teams that have uh, and EPA per play in the top 10 on both the offense and defensive side of the football. So we already know this is just a really, really good Detroit Lions team. You've yeah. got to get that advantage somewhere. And to me, that's where it could come. Maybe Jalen Petrie could truly be that plus factor to swing things in your favor. So those are the two areas that I'm really looking at for this game. What is your plus factor here for this one? Yeah, I'm going to go on the other side of things and you look at CJ Stroud versus man coverage in particular because that's something that I think that you can kind of exploit with this uh, Detroit Lions team when you look at their outside corners. Now, like I talked about, they've got two of the top three highest graded safeties, their secondary, their coverage grades, everything as a result is is really good in Detroit. I top to bottom, this defense under Aaron Glenn is great, but uh, CJ Stroud and they do play a lot of man coverage. CJ Stroud isn't particularly good against man coverage. 56.9 completion rate versus man. 79.9 passive rating. One touchdown, one interception. Uh, he does still try to go for those big time throws when he recognizes the one on one coverage. It's more than double his overall average at 11.8% big time throw percentage for CJ Stroud. So can the Lions capitalize on that or can CJ Stroud kind of shore up that that aspect of his game? I think that's going to be a huge plus factor in how the, the Texans fare in particular and how CJ Stroud does, because without that, I, I don't I don't see much of a shot right now for this Houston Texans offense going against a, a defense that is doing everything right right now for the Detroit Lions on top of the fact that their offense is seemingly scoring at will behind an incredibly efficient Jared Goff, so many different offensive weapons and a two-headed monster Sonic and Knuckles in that offensive backfield who are capable of doing everything you could possibly want a running back to do between the two of them. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure you like and subscribe the video. And if you don't have a PFF Plus subscription, you can get one to see all the premium stats that we talked about here on the show, plus the expert betting and fantasy advice over at subscribe.pff.com. The description is also right below. So if you are not a PFF Plus subscriber, you can come one today.